All right, let's have a look at a tool by Tinkercad that allows you to use coding to create 3D designs. To access their code blocks, just go to regular Tinkercad and then find their uh, code blocks link down here. You can look at some starter sample projects for inspiration, or you can create a new design. So I'm going to click New Design. And the way code blocks works is in some ways similar to Tinkercad in that you drag a shape out here and then run the code and what you'll see is that the object gets placed at the dead center of the work, work plane. So the green line here shows you the Y axis, the red is the X, and then the blue is the Z. And so it's this sphere right here is at 0, 0, 0. So anything you drag out is going to show up at 0, 0, 0. I'll drag, drag out this roof shape. I'll run those two pieces of code. And again, they're both centered half under, half over, and 0, 0, 0. Okay? I can throw those out. And I'm going to <clears throat> drag out a torus shape. And so, and I think I'll change the color to orange. Um, and if I click on the arrow here, it's going to let me adjust some of the uh, dimensions. So I'm going to give it a radius. I'm just going to fine tune this a little bit. I'm going to make it 8, uh, 12 sides, change the tube to 1, and then the steps we're going to do uh, just 10. Okay, now if I go up here and run that code, um, I get my torus shape, again centered at 000, zero, zero um, XYZ. So let me show you the kind of the end goal that we're aiming for in this tutorial. Um, this is a design that I coded with code blocks, and it consists of uh, a bunch of different uh, toruses that I've rotated around a center point. I'll show you how to do that and we're going to learn some code block uh, environment tips along the way. So to create this, I've got my torus that I just created at 000, but to make it look like this design, I'm going to need to move that torus up the Y axis. So that's the first thing I'll do. So if I scroll down, I'll find a move block and drop that below. And I'm going to move it up the Y axis, and I'm going to say by 12. So now if I run that code, it creates the torus, but then you can see it moved it up. And uh, this ability to run the code slowly um, or very fast or medium is really neat because it, uh, it lets you have, sort of get a better insight into what it is your code is doing. So I created my torus at 000, and then I moved it to 0120. OK, and my next move, if I want to uh, duplicate this, is I think I'll get a repeat block next. So I want, uh, I want this to be uh, created eight times, this torus. So I'm going to say repeat eight. And I want to um, rotate that torus shape. But I don't want to rotate it around this red line, the x axis. Instead, uh, I want to rotate it around y, the blue. So I'm going to find, I mean, sorry, z. Blue is z. So I want to, I want to rotate it around like this uh, instead of uh, one of these other axes. And um, all right, so that's a start. So let's see what that code does. So it creates the ring, but then it's just spinning around this one spot. So we've got some more work to do. What I really want it to do, right, is I want it to create a ring, move the ring, and then I want it to create a new ring, move that, and then rotate that a bit, right? So I'm starting to duplicate my eventual design, create another ring at 000, move it, rotate it a bit farther, 
And if I do that eight times, I'll have my eventual design here. So my next, uh, next step is going to be to create a variable. So uh, I'm going to create a variable, and that's going to be actually the, the first in this line of code. Um, it's, I'm going to leave it just called item. Uh, the variable's name is irrelevant because a variable is just kind of like a bucket that can hold things. And here it's just going to hold a number, and the number in that bucket is zero at the moment. And um, I'm going to uh, start working with that variable a little bit. So I want to, every, on every repetition, I want my new ring to rotate a bit farther. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say rotate around axis Z, um, not by 90 degrees, but by whatever's in the bucket degrees, whatever the variable is. And um, right, so that can be now a just like a, a bin or a bucket. This variable called item can change. Right now it's empty, but I can start changing it. Let's let's uh, let's change it uh, here. So on every all, all the eight repetitions, that bucket or that bin called item is going to increase by and let's say 45. So every time it's going to rotate around axis Z, that's the blue line, so like this, by whatever is currently in the variable item. And, uh, and we'll just put in degrees from pivot. We'll just say, you know, be clear the pivot point is 0, 0, 0. So it'll, it'll, the first time it does this, it won't rotate at all because 0 is the variable value. But then the second time it does it, it'll add 45 to 0 to get 45. And the third time it will have added another 45 for 90, etc. So let's see what that looks like. So here it's creating a torus and rotating it first 0 degrees, then 45, then 90. So on every pass, that variable called item is growing by 45 until after eight repetitions we get 360 degrees and there's our design. Uh, when we're done we can um, name the uh, design up here and you can export it and there's some neat features here we can ex export it uh, for 3D printing you can also export it um, as a part and then it becomes available um, in your normal Tinkercad account as a part. And let's have a look at how that works. Okay, here in my normal Tinkercad, um, I'm going to click on uh, my menu and go down to Part Collection. And you'll see that our newly created design is now a part. We can add it to our work plane and work with it like a normal uh, part. We can move it around. Um, we can resize it. And uh, if I wanted to laser cut this or uh, paper cut it, I would sync it into the work plane like that. And then I would export as a scalable vector graphic. And now I'm ready to um, laser cut or etch or um, paper cut. All right, there you go. There's a quick look at uh, getting going with uh, code blocks.